All right, once again, uh, thank, you, thank you everybody for joining us for today's webinar. Uh, my name is Will Stroll. I'm going to be doing the presentation today. I'm one of the sales engineers here at Dotnet New Corporation. Uh, today's topic is Look Before You Jump, uh, Mobile Website Strategy with Dotnet New. Um, so today we're going to be talking about strategy. We're not going to be outlining the features. We have an uh, upcoming webinar uh, one week from today where we're going to do a deep dive on all the features and show you how, actually how to use them to do a lot of the things we're going to be talking about today. Um, so, but before we get started, there are a couple housekeeping things that we definitely want to make sure we get out of the way. Uh, so the first thing is, I want to make sure that you can hear me. So um, if you can hear my voice, if, uh, if you could, go ahead and use the raise your hand feature in our GoToWebinar control panel. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. And the next thing is if you can see my slides okay, and you just saw it progress, and you see that little itty-bitty tree in the middle of your slide, uh, once again, can you please just raise your hand? We can know everything's working. All right. Thank you for uh, helping us out with that. Okay, so uh, throughout this uh, webinar, uh, hopefully you're going to have lots of questions. Um, you know, we're going to be talking about a lot of things, uh, but throughout the webinar, if you have any questions whatsoever, uh, use that c control panel that we've been uh, having you uh, uh, do raise your hands in so far, and go ahead and ask a question. It doesn't matter when you ask it. Uh, at the end of the webinar, we're going to go ahead and go through those and get through as many of them as possible. And for any of the questions that we do not get to, we'll go ahead and uh, email you a re personal response within the next 48 hours. Uh, so if you have any questions, don't be shy. Go ahead and ask them. Uh, if there's any other questions, just want to kind of point out our community exchange. If there's any other questions uh, or you prefer to kind of be out there and, uh, on our website asking questions, um, you can go to answers com and go ahead and ask any questions that you want there. People are really incented to answer and respond to your questions because uh, they, they get kind of some rewards for doing that. So uh, feel free to use that um, either for today's type of questions or any other .NET new questions that you might have. Now, uh, also, just kind of another thing is, you know, we do have a mobile white paper. Uh, you can find it on our website, so it's called Going Mobile, and a lot of the things we're talking about today are mentioned in that uh, white paper, so uh, feel free to download that, forward it around, give it to your boss, you know, uh, make sure you have a plan for mobile. Now, before we actually uh, uh, talk talk about some of the mobile features. I'm just going to give a short introduction to who we are as .NET Nuke, because uh, many of you are, are new to uh, the .NET Nuke ecosystem and the platform. Um, so the first thing is, you know, the opportunity here. So what .NET Nuke is, .NET Nuke is an ASP.NET application, and so it allows you to have a content-centric approach to rolling out your website. It makes it much easier. But more importantly, you know, to see, like, where we came from, you know, back in 2000, uh, there was a very, you know, a very static environment out there where uh, it was very difficult to have anything dynamic in your website. Everything was very read-only, brochure-centric. It was very informative, and there wasn't a whole lot that you could do beyond that. Um, but more importantly, it was it was very difficult to see what was going to be important to you today. Uh, you know, if you're not already looking at e-commerce as you know, one of your things, if if you sell things. Uh, if you're not already engaged in social or, or looking for a solution to be around there, if you're not already doing mobile, our topic of the day today, um, you know, it's our, we're already behind the curve here, and you're going to see some statistics about that shortly. But back in 2000, it was very difficult to be able to uh, determine that those were going to be as important today as they really are. Um, and so us as .NET Nuke, where we step in is we provide you a platform and a solution and a web content management system where you don't have to worry about the next 10 years. We're going to provide you a platform and services and features where you're going to be able to respond and adapt to tomorrow's needs uh, without having to worry about it. You're going to be able to be agile and respond to it. You know, if, if, in, uh, you know, if there's some big thing in 2020 that, that it would take ordinarily many hundreds of man hours to build, uh, you're going to find that in .NET Nuke, and you're going to be able to use that without having to uh, invest your company's resources into doing that. You're going to just be able to use the best, best of class features in your own website. So the problem we solve is business agility. We know it's difficult to do those things. We know it costs a lot of money, and we know that it takes a lot of time and effort to pay attention to what your competitors are doing and what you need to do in the future. So what we do is we go ahead and do that for you, and we make sure that you can stay relevant and you can be able to roll these features out and, and respond to your customers' and your visitors' needs in a timely manner. So just a couple things about .NET Nuke. Uh, you know, we are the world's number one or the largest uh, web content management system on the Microsoft stack. Uh, there's nobody larger. 
Um, you know, we've been the, the corporation itself has been around for uh, for three years. The project's been around for ten. Uh, but you know, in the three years that the product, that the company's been around, we've had over two thousand commercial customers. And last year, we were uh, we're very proud to have received the Inc. 500 uh, uh, award. Uh, we got number twenty three in all of software and number nine in, in the San Francisco Bay Area. So that's Silicon Valley. That's there's a lot of really high profile and, and cool companies out here. People like Twitter, Facebook, you know, Google, Yahoo. And so we're really really proud to be part of that. And we got awarded the Inc. five hundred again. Or the Inc. Yeah, the Inc. 500 again this year. Um, so the, some other company highlights. There's over 700,000 known production websites out there running on the platform today. Um, you know, that's a lot of websites. It's a lot of use cases. It's a lot of people depending on the platform, like yourself. Um, th there's also we're the only commercial, we're the only uh, web content management system with a commercial app marketplace where we have over 10,000 extensions for you to download and install into your website. So just like you know, if, if you wanted to, you know walk out of your store, out of your phone store and have a phone and you wanted to install things and make your phone personalized to what you wanted to do, you have that exact same experience on your website. You simply log into your website, you look for features that you need, you install them and you start using them right there. You, you don't have to go anywhere to do that. The, um, the other thing is you, know, we, you are going to have a large community behind you. Not only is .NET New Corporation going to be there to support you, but there's over a million community members worldwide out there supporting, using, designing for, building for .NET Nuke and providing services. So you're never going to be left behind. You're never going to be without resources. You're not going to ever be without support. Um, so those are some very important things about you know, how .NET Nuke can help you in your website solution. And you're going to be in good company as well. You know, it doesn't matter what your industry is, uh, you know, whether you're in the insurance or government or education, uh, finance, uh, you know, retail, there, .NET Nuke is in all of those verticals and more. Um, the great thing about this is, what, you know, while of course you're going to recognize some of these logos, is there's no single vertical that is .NET Nuke. We are an extremely flexible platform. So you know you can use it for your public sites, your private sites, your intranets, your extranets, your branding. You know multiple companies. You know if you have multiple brands and companies under your organization, you are going to be able to roll out not just websites but full-fledged web applications using the platform. And so you don't have to be those large companies. Uh, you can be a small company, you know, five employees and rolling out a software as a service solution, or you can be somebody as large as Time Warner Cable who has over forty-seven thousand people in their organization and they use .NET Nuke for their intranet um, website solution. Now um, one of the cool things is uh, we had a survey a couple months ago with an independent third party called Tech Validate and there were some really great results uh, validating the return on investment for using .NET Nuke. Uh, you know probably the first thing is 95% is, uh, of all customers said that they were able to improve their efficiency. They were able to be more efficient using .NET Nuke for their website solution. Um, so that's, you know, that's going to always equate to time savings, which is obviously going to be cost savings. You know, and speaking of cost savings, 94% of customers said that they saved time and money. Uh, so that's pretty substantial. That's a lot of people. But the great thing is, and this is one of my favorites, is 81% of people surveyed said they were able to deliver their website solutions faster with .NET Nuke. In fact, we even have a case study on our website where one organization said that compared to the time it normally takes them to roll out websites, they were able to save 600% of the amount of time. That was a pretty compelling case study. You can find that on our website. Now, kind of getting into mobile, that's, that's enough about uh, the background of, of .NET Nuke for right now. Um, mobile is in .NET Nuke Professional Edition 6.1 and higher. So uh, if you're not on version 6, you know, this is one of the many compelling reasons to go ahead and upgrade. You know, so with .NET Nuke 6, you know, we've always been committed committed to making your website faster, and, and we, you know, there's always been ways you could tell that. Um, so, you know, one of the things like, you know, page management and revamped user interface and, and, and user interface changing, um, you know, enhancements. These are all great things that have been able to make you roll out your website faster, get people up to speed. But, you know, one of the things that that's, uh, we promised a long time ago is to redefine what CMS stands for, you know, meaning cloud, mobile, and social. And today we're going to be talking about mobile, and I think we're, we've made great strides there. We're going to talk about some of the best practices now 
about rolling out mobile. So when we talk about mobile, uh, you know, we need to know why it's important. Uh, you know, people in the organization might be asking each other, you know, why is a mobile website important? Why do I need to worry about mobile now? You know, we already have enough to do. Um, you know, people maybe people, maybe somebody thinks that people can come to your website just you know now just fine. Um, but you know, I got a story. So you know, I have a friend who recently uh, had a baby, and, and for more than a month after the child was born, um, you know, his wife didn't use her desktop computer at all. You know, she had a laptop, but it wasn't uh, at all convenient for her with a newborn to be able to use that laptop at the same time as feeding and, and, you know, changing diapers and all those things. So she used her mobile phone exclusively for anything Internet related, um, paying bills and, and, and looking for information and finding locations and, and all kinds of things. And, uh, you know, so, you know, my own family, they don't really have any, any computers at home either. You know, they prefer to use their phones. And, and uh, in fact, you know, the, the only thing a computer gets used for is, is homework and Netflix. Uh, so it's, it's pretty compelling to see how many people are using mobile at this time. And think about your own daily life, you know, what you do. You know, whether you're at work, you know, on your way somewhere, or ready to enjoy some downtime, you are yourself using your phone more and more perhaps even more than your own laptop or your desktop computer. You, you may not even be realizing it. You know, you're showing colleagues new websites and news. Uh, you're, you're checking the latest on the web while waiting for a train or a plane or, or something else. You know, you're, you're checking uh, you know, for the best places to go for, before stepping out to dinner or the movies or for maybe for a weekend getaway. You might be looking for you know, the hotel on the way that uh, you need to stop at as, as a go-between. In nearly all these cases, you, your friends, your family, you're doing this all on mobile devices, on handheld devices. Uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of time here. You know, imagine you know waiting for these things. You, you need to get in, get out, and move on. You you can't wait for pages to load. You can't uh, you know try to figure out how to scroll on the website properly, and you can't try to figure out where something is that you need to get to on a mobile device where you know it would ordinarily be very easy if you're on your laptop. So even though we're talking about mobile, one of the things is you know to keep in mind is uh, you know especially when we consider the agility of, of your website solution is is that, you know if today's visitors are using mobile devices more and more, you know what will tomorrow's visitors be using to browse your website? You know it's that's something to consider. So if you already have a website, I'm sure you already noticed the number of devices your website is increasing. All you have to do is go to Google Analytics or whatever analytics services you're using and see just how many people and how it's growing, what the trend is of mobile visitors on your coming to your website. So a study was recently performed by the Morgan uh, by Morgan Stanley Research where they analyzed and they compared the trends of mobile devices against traditional devices such as laptops or desktop computers. And what they were able to conclude is that the number of people visiting your website using a mobile device will overtake laptops and desktops by the year 2014 or earlier. That is right around the corner. Um, and so some compelling stats about that. You know, there are four billion mobile phones in the world today. That's a lot of phones. In fact, I actually saw a study, um, you know, the other morning where they're starting to say it's four or five billion. Um, you know, and so when you think about that, you know, as far as mobile devices, that overtook the standard telephone in 2002. It overtook the number of televisions out there in 2003. You know, there's a lot of TVs out there. It overtook the number of credit cards out there in 2004. And the most interesting thing is it overtook the radio in 2008. Um, you know, and some other compelling stats about, about uh, mobile visitors, uh, you know, uh, in, in Q4 2009, so that was a few years ago, you know, eBay saw a sell every two seconds use it from uh, mobile devices. And Amazon had, ar had already uh, done over a billion dollars in revenue in mobile devices. You know, and so at .NET Nuke, we, we looked at all the above statistics and many others before stepping into the mobile space. And we took notice of all the information available, including uh, what many industry leaders have been doing already. Uh, you know, one great thing, and you know, I'm going to talk about this later, is, is you know, there was even this great um, uh, keynote uh, at, a, at the Think Mobile conference in the UK a while back uh, by Ian Carrington. Um, you know, that's one of the things that you definitely want to look into. Now another study, um, this was done by Yahoo last year, um, 
Yahoo, Yahoo. This uh, show uh, this shows uh, several common in, in internet tasks and, and the percentage of tasks that were done using a mobile browser versus a mobile app. And so there's some very compelling stories to be seen from this picture, but I'm going to talk about two. Uh, so first, you should notice that people are trying to use their mobile browser first for things like shopping, search, and entertainment. That's an existing statistic, and that's over a year old. Um, you know, if, so if your organization does e-commerce, if you aggregate information to make it searchable, or if you offer multimedia, you know, things like images and videos and, and, and audio files or something, uh, or if that's part of your, your content, you're already behind by at least a year if you don't already have a mobile website and a mobile friendly website catering to your visitors. The other very interesting thing about these results is that the, the majority of existing tasks that are being performed uh, that might be considered the most common and, and even the lowest hanging fruit, uh, they're being handled by native applications right now. The mass majority, you know, the 60% there, that's almost 70. Um, so they're, they're not mobile friendly websites. You know, let that soak in. Think about that. The most common activities are, are being done that way. So there's a lot of ground to be gained here. So for some of you, this may not, may not make sense immediately, but think about your own smartphone habits. When you uh, look for the presence of a company or a service, you know, there's more often a built-in app that helps you find it. It's built into your device. So if you continue to do your job well you know, with search engine optimization, or SEO as, as most of us call it, then hopefully you're showing up. You know, that's the first step. But the very next step for a mobile visitor is, the, is most likely going to get them visiting your website. Is your website ready for that? Are you ready for that? You know, will your visitor be able to do what they want to or need to today? That's something to ask. So, I got some uh, uh, industry best practices I'm going to show you now about some of the people that have been doing this for years and talk about you know, some of the ways that their website is doing this. And so some of these people like Amazon, they're not going to be uh, so different. You're going to know who they are. Uh, so you know, Amazon, they're continually mentioned as, as a leader in e-commerce, usability, and, and a lot of other things. But long ago, I mentioned that $1 billion earlier, uh, long ago they saw that opportunity that mobile devices could have for their business. You know, that they also noticed that mobile visitors, that we wanted to see and use their website differently. And they kind of had to, especially when Amazon got into this. So when you look at, um, you know, what this website has, it has this vertical navigation, it has an autocomplete search, uh, you know, there's a lot of small links, and there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of ads, there's a lot of calls to action, there's a lot of ways that on a desktop, I can go ahead and use this site. Uh, but, you know, I keep using the word a lot. You know, on your device, you don't have a whole lot of room, so a lot is not ideal. So you can see what their mobile website looks like now. You know, notice how the design and layout of the mobile version of their website is so much different than their desktop version. You know, everything is laid out in a much cleaner way, uh, allowing us to, you know, especially those of us with our, with our fat fingers, to have much more forgiveness on the smaller screens. You know, there's a vertical menu uh, versus a horizontal one. Uh, there's scro the scroll, so the scrolling side to side is a big deal. There's a lot of devices that can't do that. It's not easy, or you know, it's just sometimes it seems impossible. But the call to action here is much smaller. Just the most important things are, are available to us. We can search immediately. It's at the top of the screen. You know, the most prominent or the the uh, the, the campaign that they want to do the, the most or get the most exposure to. It's right at the top. And then, of course, you can shop through the departments just below this call to actions. Next one I'm going to mention is CNN. Um, you probably recognize them too. You know, their desktop, uh, their desktop site is, is full of information, as any news site would be, you know, allowing you to get to any story very quickly and easily, although it's, it's taking full advantage of the entire available screen real estate that desktop visitors have. You know, your monitor is all course, much larger than your mobile device. So their mobile site's going to be much different. You know, there isn't a whole lot of room to provide all the stories at once, so the stories are prioritized. You know, they're allowing the most important content to be just a touch away from the mobile website visitor. Um, you know, images are downsized to be more, more mobile friendly. And the menu is, once again, a, a, it's kind of a, a, a mobile friendly menu. It's a drop down list instead of that horizontal kind of hover type menu. And notice how the ads are gone. Um, you know, all that other information is gone, and you do not have to scroll 
from side to side. So uh, Kaiser Permanente, um, you know, if you're not in the California area, you probably don't know who these guys are, but uh, they're, they're not unique in the healthcare space, but they are a healthcare provider. Um, but you know, they have a very similar story going on here. You know, some of the things that you immediately are able to do on a, a desktop side is, is uh, you know, sign in so you can go look at information. You can, you can go look up articles and you know, getting started and looking up your, 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 uh, uh, your, your plans and everything. But you know, there's a lot of things going on once again. When you compare that with their uh, mobile solution, think about if you are on your desktop and wanting to do those things, you know, you're going to have a lot more time. You're probably looking for different information. But look what they've done to our mobile site. You know, when I'm on my device, I might be concerned about like, you know, what, were, what were my last test results? We've got medical record right at the top. The pharmacy center, you know, I might be on my way to their pharmacy. I'm looking for direction or maybe going to see a doctor. The appointment center is right there. So within a touch, I can get to knowing you know, which doctor I'm seeing or where is it, and of course messages, and then finding locations. So there's a lot of information that is completely different than on their desktop site because when somebody's on the go, they're not coming there for the same reason. And that's one of the most important things that I want you to get from this talk. So ESPN, this is a much more fun uh, uh, one. Uh, so this is a great and fun example. Uh, you know, many of you have probably been to their site at least once, you know, even if you're not a sports nut. And uh, they cover nearly every type of sport that there is. So they're displaying scores and news and, and, and things that um, for pretty much every sport. Uh, but it's really easy to get to in a desktop version of your site because once again, you have time, you have a mouse, um, you can kind of just glance over the page and get to information very, very quickly. When you look at their mobile device, look how once again everything's kind of streamlined. The scores are moved to the bottom. That's not necessarily the most uh, important thing they want you to get to. And instead of having those large images, you know, just like they did before, you know, they kind of downsize things. But the navigation, if you're not noticing that, it's up at the top center there where it says sports. The navigation is provided again in a drop-down list. So it's not like these hover type menus. It's not uh, super client side uh, intensive. And the search is reduced down to that little search icon. But the really cool thing about what ESPN did is that they, they also have a tablet friendly version of their site that's completely different from their standard mobile site. So what they're trying to do is take full advantage of the extra real estate that tablets have and the context that a tablet visitor is using their site, of a tablet, you know, when they come to your site. So uh, the, the layout's slightly different. You know, there's more advertising. Uh, there wasn't any in the, uh, well, there's one small, small ad on the mobile device. Uh, device. But, uh, you know, the media is larger. There's more of it. And there's, the menu's horizontal like their desktop site. So you're taking full advantage of, of that screen real estate. But note that in all these examples, the mobile version of these sites were still able to convey the intended content while keeping the branding, the marketing, and their goals in sight. Um, so the, the other great example about ESPN is that they, while they know that there's more real estate and, and more capabilities on the tablet, they, they, this adjustment that they've made to the user experience is accounting for not just that, but also they know that a tablet visitor is going to be able to stay on their site and they're, they're, they're uh, they're already planning to stay on their site much longer. They're going to be browsing for a longer time than a handheld device. Um, so this allows them to take full advantage of the additional browsing time that visitors will, will be spending on their site. So all you have to do is look at the additional calls to action on the page to realize this. Now just a couple more examples here. Uh, so by far my favorite example of mobile context is travel. It, almost every travel provider out there they've gotten it right. And, and the, so the main reason why I like it is, is you know, we can all relate to travel very, very easily. We've all traveled at least once. Um, so as a result, we've all been to the mobile versions of our favorite airlines or hotels. You know, if, if you're lucky, you've never had a bad mobile experience. You, the travel industry has been doing this probably longer than everybody else. Uh, but Hopefully the travel website you ended up on has, has been properly provided to you uh, to adjust to the mobile context. You know, they realize that, they, that you know, you're there for a different reason. And with American Airlines, notice how the very first thing, the most prominent thing that you're here to do is the book travel. Everything else is second hands. You know, there's nothing else that um, you're there to do in their eyes, but you, you're able to get to those other things like check-in and reservations and status 
but it's not the immediate thing that they're trying to get you to do. When you contrast this with their mobile website, notice how it's a little bit different. You know, it's all about trying to find out my reservation, my check-in, my status, whether or not there's Wi-Fi in the plane. Uh, we all want Wi-Fi, right? And then, you know, they're getting their boarding pass. And so there's, these are things that when I'm on my mobile device, I'm in my cab or getting driven to the airport or I'm waiting to check in. These are pieces of information that is going to be very important to me. So looking for that on a desktop version of the site is not going to make me a happy camper. Um, so, but do note that, you know, in all these examples, we are, we are able to get back to the full version of the website, too. So that's another best practice. But in, in the cases of people like American Airlines, you know, they probably are also have an app out there. And so, you know, having the ability to customize the user experience on your desktop site, if somebody ends up on there somehow on a tablet or, or uh, uh, you know, a phone, uh, you know, you, you should be able to do that. You should be able to, and this is a best practice, let people know that, hey, this app exists as well. So you might want to consider using this. And so if you come to their site, this very same home page, on a desktop version of the, or a desktop device of some kind, um, you're not going to see this message, but you can see here that it is there. Uh, you know, if you come to it on a different device. So this is my last example here, JetBlue. Um, so they're a great airline. You know, they try to do their very best to make everything look really, really good, as any brand should. Um, but I didn't mean for that to rhyme, guys. Sorry. So <laughs> all navigation and input fields are large and easy to use. Uh, you know, easy to see, you know, uh, much less to use. Uh, so, but the major call to action here is no different than any other travel website. They really want you to book something right now. Um, you know, they want your money. You know, they're trying to get your money immediately. But the secondary calls to action are, are, are here that is to uh, buy double points. You know, you can see that they, once again, they want your money. They're there to generate revenue. Um, but, uh, you know, a couple of extra seconds, you're going to notice that you're able to also do things like look at your flight status, check in, and so on. Now, when you look at what they've done for mobile visitors, they not only have a mobile presence, but they also have a mobile app. They've done both, so, but they've also been extremely careful to consider the user experience of both. They didn't just roll them out, and, and that's one of the th purposes of, of today's uh, webinar. You don't just roll things out. Um, so their mobile website probably doesn't look too impressive, and if you're not uh, familiar with which one that is, that's the one on the right there. Um, so in fact, it probably looks very boring to you. Uh, there's nothing impressive about it. Uh, but what they've done is, is there is very, very smart. They have retained their branding, so they got the colors, their logo, and so on. But at the same time, they've offered the most common tasks to their visitors, and, and only those tasks, just like we saw with American Airlines. But this website is designed to be able to appeal to the largest possible audience out there. Um, because, you know, so that way no cus consumer or customer on their uh, mobile browsers are going to be left behind because not every mobile browser or every mobile device is created equal. Some are going to have more or less capabilities. So that's another thing you have to be concerned about. But their mobile app is much more robust uh, graphically. You know, the graphics don't need to be downloaded after every action like on a mobile site. And there's other integrated features such as weather. You know, they can go ahead and pull weather because it doesn't take much information to go over the um, internet to grab that. And it also includes things like notifications because they're, they're able to integrate natively with the phone's operating system and hardware. And, and there's even personalization here. A mobile user can set up their own preferences of how the app works and save them for the next time the app is used. But those are, a lot of those are things that you can do on your mobile website as well. And just like American Airlines, you know, they've provided a way for you to be aware of that they have a mobile app for you to use. So, you know, I've given some very high-profile examples. Uh, these organizations have been doing this for many years now, and that's part of the reason I use these. Um, you know, they're very large, though. They have even larger budgets. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, the reality is, though, you don't have to be a Fortune 1000 company or, or have a Fortune 1000 budget to do this today. Everything that I've shown you is possible with .NET Nuke today. So you don't have to wait till tomorrow. It's not next year. You don't have to wait till your budgets get bigger. You don't have to do all the, any of those things. .NET Nuke is here to help you with, with a lot of these features. Um, 
So to kind of highlight, uh, you know, why everything was so different, uh, this is kind of a summary. You know, remember, people are on the go. They're coming to your website for a much different reason than if they were coming to it on their, their laptop or their desktop computer. The device screens are much smaller. I mean, look at the example here. You have much, uh, a much smaller area to impress people and to get people to do things than you do on your desktop. Uh, remember, a mouse is smaller than people's fingers, you know, so you know, it's a lot easier to get uh, precise clicks and actions with a mouse than when, with somebody's feature, especially when we're talking about a phone. On mobile devices, there's some very limited multimedia su format support, and depending on the device, you're going to have different multimedia format support, so you have to think about that. Through one of the studies, we found that on mobile devices, this is not uh, it's a little bit more uh, for a, um, a tablet, and it's a lot more for a, a desktop user. But the average browsing session on uh, it, so this is entire session. This isn't waiting for your web your web page web page to load. The entire session of browsing on a mobile device is five seconds. That's the average. It's a little bit higher once again on the tablets. On in your desktop computers, it's about a minute, just over a minute. Um, actually, that, that might be even more today. Uh, but anyway, uh, and then there's slower internet speeds. So on your mobile devices, unless they're connected to Wi-Fi, you know, they are going to have to wait for things to load. It's going to take a lot longer. Scrolling is, of course, an issue, uh, especially on mobile devices, and, and, and especially when you think about scrolling from side to side. There's a lot of devices where scrolling sideways is an issue, and, and, and sometimes impossible. And then there's a huge difference between being able to touch something, you know, so think about your finger selecting something on a website, between hovering, which you can't do on any mobile device today, or clicking. So touch and click are not the same thing, so you have to keep that in mind as well. And that's why, and, and this is just a small list, this isn't everything, um, that's why there's a much different um, reason or a much different way to roll out your website versus or, uh, your, uh, your mobile website uh, versus your desktop site. Now, some, something to keep in mind is you know, the Internet uses patterns that, that, have, that we're using today or that have been analyzed, you know, they are what we're using today to build desktop websites. You know, we're very good at building desktop websites out there right now. Even, even the most amateur web developer out there already knows about a lot of the best practices and employs them to be able to uh, have you know, the best website you possibly can for your desktop users. But, Things have shifted. So, you know, if you only have a few moments, remember that five seconds, and, and that's the entire session. That's not the amount of time for your one page view. But if you only have a few moments to interact with your customer, you know, before they do something, you have to make sure that you make it worth it. Otherwise, you're missing the boat. They're moving on to somebody else, and that might be a competitor, or they're going to be forgetting about you at all. Now, uh, one of the topics here is, is and that I, and I especially introduce is, you know, would you are you going to be using the app versus you know um, a website having a website or an app and you know there's no fine there's no actual like global answer for this you know it's something you're going to have to weigh out and I'm going to provide you with some information right now to help you with that but when you're talking about having a mobile website you know you're going to be able to reach a much broader audience um, you know you're going to want to consider that and with the mobile app you're going to have to worry about things like marketplaces and capabilities and and so on. Um, but the answer is you don't have to choose. You can do both. Um, it's not a versus argument. It's what you and your organization, uh, you, you decide that you need to do. So it doesn't have to be either or conversation. But what you do need to do is make sure you're, that you're informed. And so hopefully through today's webinar and our white paper and, and maybe talking to us, uh, we can help you uh, through that conversation. And both are, in fact, both are possible through .NET New York. You don't have to make this uh, decision based upon the platform that you choose to roll out your website. Now, so the, the argument of mobile uh, site versus native app. So this, this is, once again, not an exhaustive list. But you know, with your mobile site, you're able to, once again, reach a larger audience. So you can re reach a lot more people than in native apps. Because with native apps, you're going to have to worry about building one for Windows, building one for Android, building one for for uh, iPhone or iOS and, 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 and uh, building one for BlackBerry. You know, you, you're going to have to have apps specific to all those platforms and those apps, every single platform is going to require a different skill set. 
So you're able to reach a larger audience a lot easier, a lot faster with a mobile site. And so for the reasons, the development reasons I just um, mentioned, it's going to be a lower cost to create your mobile site, and it's going to be a shorter time to market. Now, the other great thing about a mobile site is when you want to make an update, it's instant. You just roll it out. You roll it out to your, your uh, mobile site, and people, the next page that they have, they're going to have that new update. So if you need to add another call to action or, you know, you forgot to add, like, you know, status of your flight or, or something like that, you can roll it out. You don't have to wait for any marketplace to review your app and then get it out there. Um, so, you know, part of that, there's no sensor. So if there is a marketplace you would have to deal with ordinarily with a native app, you know, you don't have to worry about them looking and saying, no, you know what, we can't roll this out because, you know, this, this, and this need to be adjusted because of blah, blah, blah. You don't have to worry about that. You can just roll out and manage your mobile website. And so, you know, kind of all of these kind of summarize the, the, the lower barrier to entry. Um, but the lower barrier to entry also includes the ability for you to build it. You know, you probably already have the skill sets on hand, whether they're through consultants you regularly use or in-house, your developers you already have, you can already build a mobile website today, and you, whether it's .NET Nuke or otherwise, you already have the skill sets. And the other thing is you don't have to share revenue. So if you were going to charge for a native application, you don't have to worry about them uh, taking a piece of the pie if you are rolling out a mobile website. But there are some pros to having a native app as well. Native app is going to be faster because the connectivity, for one, they're going to be able to not only connect uh, uh, consistently across the networks, but they get to connect for less information. With your mobile site, you're going to be requesting the entire page every time. Uh, with a native app, you're going to only be requesting data, so it's a much less or much smaller piece of information that's going back and forth across your data line. Um, you, know, you know, and so your native app, you know, one of some of the things that it doesn't have to do is ask for certain things over and over again because there are uh, additional device-based caching options for an app developer to use. Um, you, of course, can use it, have a richer user experience because, once again, these, these graphics and things, they don't need to come from other places. They're already saved on your, on your little device, and so they, you can have a much richer user experience. And if you have a mobile device, you already know that if you've downloaded any of these uh, um, you know, popular games out there. <clears throat> and so that allows you to have a, a very immersive experience because you're not only having things local in the system, but you also are able to integrate with the platform that you have it on. So whether it's you know, uh, Windows uh, or, or Android or, or iOS, you already have that immersive experience uh, or the ability to create that rather. Um, you can have stronger branding, and so you know, with a mobile device, of course, you're going to have your branding. Uh, but the, the, one of the differences in having a native app is that if they add your app to their phone, and then they maybe create or create a shortcut on their home screen, your app, your brand is constantly in their face, and so um, it's one more piece to you know, build stronger branding. Uh, performance will be a perceived uh, 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 pro on your native app because once again, because of connectivity and because of the the local caching. Um, you know, it has less to do and it has less information to ask for whenever you're performing actions or tasks on an app application that's on the device. Uh, discoverability is, is uh, it, well, this can be perceived as a pro or a con uh, because depending on the marketplace, it may be easier or more difficult to find your application. But, you know, it's one more place that somebody can discover your brand, discover your services, discover your products, because you're now in another marketplace. You're in another place for people to search for and find you. Um, but along with that, you, know, you also have the, uh, this big sea of other apps that you have to compete with. And so, you know, you, you not only have search engine optimization, but now you have application marketplace optimization you have to worry about. So another way to look at this, um, by the way, this uh, information, this is a, uh, uh, came from a study by Forbes, and so you know uh, uh, it's a really comprehensive article about the pros and cons of rolling out a mobile site versus rolling out a, a native application. And once again, you don't have to choose; you can do both if it makes sense for your organization. So you know, across the board, for, except for the marketplace, mobile website has um, uh, you know some things that it can do to offer you. So you have a lot more support. The only thing is, you only have a little bit of device. Um, that you can access as a mobile device. And of course, you're not in a marketplace for your website. That's your search engine. Uh, with your native application, you know, there's a higher development cost. So um, that's going to be a con no matter what organization you are. Uh, and then the approval process, of course, is going to uh, sometimes prevent you from getting out into the marketplace when you want to. 
Now, hopefully, I'm not confusing you guys. Hopefully, I'm not uh, getting you lost. Hopefully, you don't feel like any of these things. But if you do, don't worry. You know, you know once again, this is this webinar is here for you. And uh, I'm sure some of you have asked if it's being recorded. It is being recorded. And we have that white paper that's going to be available for you. So we're here for you. We're here to to help you walk through this process of having a best practice and having uh, thought about the process to get to your mobile solution or your mobile website. Uh, so some of the steps to get there. You know, the first thing is define your project. You know, how and what do you want your mobile website to be? What does it need to have on it? What do people need to get to and, and what do you expect for them to get to? But more importantly, ask some of your customers. What do they want to get to? What do they think they need? Uh, so don't just uh, make this a closed meeting. It's, it's really important to talk to your customer base as well. And by the way, your customer base might be people in your organization. This might be for an internal website, for your internal extranet or intranet. You know, these are things you need to think about. Um, so when you talk about what these are, you know, there's a lot of stakeholders. So you need to make sure you define your goals, your user base, and what tools are you going to use to get there. So that's part of the definition of your project. Uh, so once you find out what you need, you know, there's going to be pros and cons. You need to figure out what they are. So once you figure out what they are, once you figure out you know, uh, what they are compared to you know, the device and capabilities and, and what you need to do, uh, reverse engineer those. Move backwards. And so that way it gives you a clear path to defining, do I need a mobile website? Do I need a mobile app? Do I need both? And what do they need to have in there as features? Because the, the, one of the biggest things that, that I need for you to get from this talk is that your mobile website should not be an exact replication, even using responsive rendering. It's not. It should be the ex exact replication of your mobile or of your desktop website. And so, some of the uh, questions you need to ask for to you know get your project going. This is just some things to help you with that. You know, how do you expect for people to find you, and, and how do you want? For people to find you, it might it might end up being different once you roll out your mobile uh, solutions. How important is branding? You know, do you want to have more or less? Or is is your branding okay? You know, there's a lot of things to consider there. And what features do you want to have? And you need to define what those features are. It's not just like, hey, I have three bullets. You need to define them. Well, how are they going to work? You know, what are they going to have? What are they going to represent? Um, you know, and which ones are not just the ones that you decide you want to have? But which ones are the most important to your visitors, the people that are going to be using your website? And then, you know, one big thing is what kind of resources do you have? Can you build it? Can you afford for somebody else to build it? And can you support it? And, uh, and you know, in the case of .NET, a lot of the things, like you'll see next week in, in the follow-up webinar to this, is there's a lot of things that you don't have to build. There's a lot of things just done for you. Uh, and uh, so what size budget do you have? Of course, you know, everything else is going to end up creating a budget for you. And how often do you need to update your web presence on your mobile devices? Is it, um, you know, is it often? Um, you know, is it just you know, one, one shot and you're done? And so these things are going to help you define, pardon me, define what your project looks like. And, and so this project, you know, Basically, what I, what I just described to you is you're going to you know figure out what your scope is, and you're going to figure out how much time it uh, takes to uh, to build that scope, and you know you're going to be keep going in the circle of you know finding out what the cost is there and adjusting. So when you do these project requirements, you know the number one thing that you need to worry about though is quality. You know uh, balancing all this out and making sure you have the most quality experience for your end users possible. Um, so. That, so once again, this is the number one thing I want you to take from here, and, and this is a, a you know uh, from Forbes, uh, from the Forbes uh, uh, mobile uh, articles. Uh, don't try to replicate your entire website. That's bad. You know, rethink your offer on a local level and focus on what brings the most value in a mobile context. Mobile context is key. Mobile context doesn't mean everything on your website. Mobile context means present just the things that your mobile visitors are coming to your site for. Now, the whole purpose of today's webinar, and we're wrapping it up here, um, is you know if you don't have a mobile strategy, you don't have a future strategy. This is uh, you know what I talked about earlier. If you if you, uh, if you um, can go look up Ian Carrington, uh, the Think Mobile conference. He has a one-hour keynote there. He talks about a lot of these things, and, and it's really worth your time um, to uh, do the research to get this right the first time. But make sure you have a strategy. Don't just roll out your website. Don't just put out a responsive site. You know, make sure you're putting out a site that is going to get you the most 
for your, uh, you know, for your investment. And so just kind of a, a, a recapping, you know, a lot of these features, you know, everything that we mentioned today in a mobile context is possible with .NET Nuke, whether we're talking about the mobile features we're talking about next week, whether we're talking about the services framework, uh, you know, building your apps that are, that need content, that can, your content can be all managed from one place. You know, you can do all these things with .NET Nuke. And so once again, we're here to make sure that you're agile. You know, your web presence and your website is your most important business asset, but your content really is your most important business asset. So whether your content's going through or from the cloud or it's mobile or e-commerce or document management, you know, that's where we're here to help you and have the best of breed solution, having the best class uh, features to be able to get you there. And so what we've been talking about today, the mobile features, uh, they are all in the professional enterprise editions. Um, so you're, you're able, you'll be able to uh, get to your mobile features, whether it's a redirect or you know the other things we're going to talk about next week. Um, so there's three flavors of .NET Nuke. There's Community Edition. It's a free and open source solution. Um, you know, there's, it's deployed in hundreds of thousands of production websites worldwide, but your support is limited to the .NET Nuke forums. And so we do have commercial solutions here at .NET Nuke Corporation. So we do have fully um, supported uh, mission critical uh, features that are, are part of your professional enterprise edition. And you get unlimited online technical support from our staff and so we have options for both uh, online and phone support and so you can see a lot of the things that your content will need are offered in those additions. Uh, there's some add-on services as well so there's elite support that's a telephone based support it includes a quicker response time, uh, you know, installation upgrade support so it will help you get up upgraded or, or installed. Um, then there's an additional uh, add-on uh, type of support called uh, developer support services. And it's not just for developers. It could be for anything. You could be talking about SEO or, or performance uh, enhancements or, or a roadmap for you know, rolling out your project. It's basically anything uh, that you need to talk about that's not you know, the standard break-fix type of support. So you, um, you have direct access to engineers who talk to a lot of customers just like yourselves. Then we have online, uh, or then we have a training program. It's uh, provided by Chris Hammond. He's our, uh, he's a published author as well as the director of training programs. And so we have three different types of training, whether it's uh, on-demand uh, webinars or live webinars, on-site training or custom training. Um, you know, we're here to support you. So we're about to get to your questions, but I just want to mention that we have .NET New World coming up. It's coming up uh, in less than a month now. Uh, so you know. Uh, I've been to quite a few of these, and, and if you ask anybody who's been to one of these, uh, our annual conference, uh, it's, it's one of those do not miss events. And this year we're focusing on uh, mostly on social, but cloud and mobile are going to be topics as well, so you're going to have a lot more information about what we're talking about today. Um, there is an early bird discount there, so you know if you're watching this webinar, you can take advantage of that. Um, it's, you're going to pay much more without that discount code, so make sure you copy that, take it to your boss, uh, and would love to see you there. Um, so we also have some contests uh, going to be there, and so it's going to be a great time. Uh, make sure you show up there, but you're going to have best-of-class speakers or speakers traveling in from all over the world, and so you're going to be learning a lot about uh, what you need to know to have your, your, the best website possible to not only serve your mobile visitors, but also um, have a socialized website, a social website, social experience, the ability to get people engaged in collaborating and, and building your brand on your own website. Um, so we're going to get to questions now. Just make sure uh, you know if you want to connect with us on the social networks. If you have uh, Twitter accounts or LinkedIn or Facebook, uh, feel free to uh, uh, see us there. Uh, we'd love to uh, have you follow us um, and to, you know engage with us. Uh, we have more webinars coming up. I mentioned uh, there's a second part to today's webinar where I'm going to actually uh, walk you through the features and how we can do some of these things next week. So that's a week from today. Um, so make sure you go to our webinar page and sign up for that. Uh, we also have free online demos. So if you are if you're like me and you're impatient and you want to try these features out today, feel free. Go to our online demo. Uh, you can go ahead. It's a, it's a very painless process. You're going to have a fully functional website immediately. You don't have to install it on your own machine. It just works and you can play with all these features right now. And then, of course, DNN World again. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, now look at some of these questions. And, uh, and if I can't get to them, I will uh, make sure that we uh, get to you um, in the uh, next 48 hours. So give me a second as I open these. All right. Let 
Um, it's a lot of uh, repeat questions that looks like uh, you've already had answers to. Okay. Um, so how can we manage a larger grid in mobile? Uh, say we have a 10 column grid to display each column and uh, you know there's decent data so uh, they want to minimize the ability to scroll on there. So there's a lot of ways that you can build your user interface on your website. Um, you know th there's this webinar wasn't really to, to show you how to do that but basically what you want to do is kind of build that out into ways to where you would uh, Define the user interface through you know the limitations that you have. So uh, you know, for example, you might have you might break that data into you know appear to be navigational um, areas, and so you might have ten navigational uh, items that you can uh, use to make it look like they're different pages, but you're actually showing one. Uh, I would caution against that a little bit though, because if you have ten columns of grid information, it's a lot of information having to be transferred. So you know, do take into account that your website visitors probably are using lower bandwidth. So you might want to break that. You might actually want to break that out into ten pages. Um, so uh, another question here, would you have multiple CSS schemes for phone, tablet, and desktop? So I'm going to go into more detail next week on, on like how this happens, uh, but um, you definitely would want to have different uh, 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 schemes and, and layouts in CSS. You know, I, I, uh, if one of the things I mentioned was don't just roll out responsive design. Responsive design is definitely something you want to use, uh, so that way you have one website that's mobile, um, for mobile visitors or, and, or maybe another one also for tablet visitors, but it, it is able to adapt to the different uh, resolutions, to the different uh, screen dimensions, because if you've seen uh, any number of mobile devices or even tablets, none of them have the same dimensions. And so you want to, responsive design is great. You know, you don't want to do that for your desktop site and just reformat your desktop site. On your mobile devices, you want to uh, have, or in your mobile versions of your site, you want to have responsive design there to um, you know, adjust to the layouts. And so in those sites, you're going to have a different CSS and scheme and, and layout for your desktop site versus your phone versus your tablet, um, unless you wrap phone and tablet all into one shot. Um, so there's a question here, is this also available in Community Edition? Um, you know, the, the only thing that's uh, really available in Community Edition is the ability to, or is the view for redirects, uh, but you do have enhanced support, and I'll go into that in greater detail. I'd love to show you that next week. So next week, make sure you show up for that, and I'll show you the differences. Uh, so how easy is it to create a mobile site that doesn't display all your pages and content from your site, but just the most important things? Um, well, if you've built a site, and uh, at all, a desktop site, you know that you basically you're throwing everything at it. So you have all of your blogs, all of your news, all of your content, all of your users, you know, everything in there. Um, so there's a lot of site building that happens there. So if you imagine what you need to do for your desk or for your website visitors that are on mobile, on your mobile devices, your mobile version of it, you're going to only have, ideally, you're going to only have a subset of all that information. Um, you may have it all, you may not. It just depends on your project. Uh, and what your organization needs, but in a lot of cases you're going to be having less information there. So a lot of your work is going to be around making sure your design is proper and then also properly defining um, you know, what you need to have on that site. Uh, I like this question. How well does .NET Nuke work within iOS? Uh, so .NET Nuke is a web application framework, but it is uh, more importantly a website. Um, so out of the box, .NET Nuke is not just cross-browser compatible. So whether we're talking Safari or Chrome or or anything else, Internet Explorer, uh, Firefox, uh, you know, it'll work across all those. But it's also cross-platform compatible. So it's going to also allow you to uh, uh, you know work across different platforms. So whether it's Linux, iOS, Android. Windows, whatever, um, you know, out of the box, it is that way. So it's, uh, uh, you don't have any concerns there. Uh, let's see here. So there's another question here about responsive design over a separate mobile uh, site. Uh, hopefully I answered that question for you. Um, And let's see, asking about next week's webinar. So yes, we're going to be just talking about the actual um, interaction using mobile features. Um, 
All right, oh, this is a great question. So will custom um, modules be able to convert easily to a mobile or tablet? So that's an incredibly great uh, uh, question because I'm not just going to show you the features next week, but one of the things to keep in mind is no matter what feature you see in .NET Nuke, it's API based. And so if you are a developer or designer, everything that's in a web, um, everything that's in, that's you can see in the user interface is something that you can do as well. It's all part of the API. So if you see us adjusting to uh, layouts, um, you know, because of or adjusting features or layouts, uh, because you know it's a mobile device versus a desktop uh, a user or whatnot, you are going to be able to take advantage of the very same API and do exactly the same thing. So not only would you want to target. Um, uh, you know how you display things in your design using the uh, API and, and uh, things in .NET Nuke to make that available to you, but you might want to adjust features in your own developed modules based upon that. And because of the API, you're going to be able to target things like capabilities and screen real estate and and which platform people are coming from and so on. Um, Okay, so here's a great question about analytics, and I'm only going to be able to get to a couple more questions here. So if you have a responsive site that changes, how do you measure analytics and conversion rates for each mobile and desktop visits? So uh, ideally, and, and this is the way I'm going to show this next week, you can roll out your, your mobile presence in many different ways, and, and it's not just mobile site versus uh, mobile app. Um, you can have multiple ways you do your mobile site, and so there's like three popular ways. Um, but my prescribed way, and, and, and this is a best practice, is, is to have a different website for your mobile visitors. And so that makes you makes it a lot easier to do a lot of things. And one of them is analytics and, and, and separating out conversion rates. Um, but regardless to whether it's a separate site or not, you can, if you're using services, you know, an analytics service, um, you can separate that out. You can already be able to segment that out through the reporting interfaces, but you can also use things like in um, Professional Enterprise Edition, there's advanced segmentation. Um, so if you use something like advanced segmentation, you can have automatically, automatically uh, segmented out reports that get you exactly what you're looking for. So when you go up to your uh, Google Analytics reports, for example, <laughs> going to have two sets of reports. Uh, you're going to have one for everybody and another one for whatever segmentation that you created in, in this case uh, for mobile devices. Um, so where can I download the going mobile white paper? That's going to be on our website, but we'll make sure we uh, also include it in the email so that way you have direct access to it. And so look forward to that. Uh, the email containing the recording and, and everything from today uh, should go out in the next 24, 48 hours. So expect to see that in your inbox soon. Uh, keep your eye on it, or out for it, rather. Um, let's see here. Uh, one more question. All right, so the last question I'm going to be able to answer today is, uh, can, uh, can you choose the different skins for different devices? Uh, you know, and examples are given BlackBerry uh, versus Samsung. Um, so I'm assuming the Samsung S3, everybody's excited about that one, right? Um, so can you choose different designs? You absolutely can. And so that's something I was uh, just kind of touching on just a minute ago, um, is when you use that API that, that uh, we make available to you that you don't have to build and the data that you don't have to get, we provide that data to you with all these different devices and capabilities and, 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 and so on, um, you, know, you are able to either customize the existing design or you can even choose to dynamically switch out designs. And so you can switch out the entire layout if you want, or you can just switch out um, you know, just maybe style sheets, and maybe that's enough. Uh, it's completely up to you. And especially when you talk about responsive um, rendering, you know, using things like CSS3 media queries and, and HTML5, you can get exactly what you're looking for, um, and uh, you may be in a single design. Uh, you know, single design for mobile, and you know, of course, I'm going to tell you to have a different design for your desktop. So that's the last question I'm going to be able to do uh, for you today. And thank you so much for t uh, joining us on today's webinar. I know time is very valuable to you, and um, you know, it's valuable to everybody. So thank you for joining us, and enjoy the rest of your days or evenings, uh, afternoons, whatnot. And um, have uh, you know, have a good one. And we uh, hope to see you soon, and look forward to the uh, seeing you at Dean World.